Welcome to Table Talk Reviews. It's time to time travel to the past and spend three days visiting ancestors and famous historical events in Trekking Through History, a game for two to four players designed by Charlie Bink and published by Underdog Games. Let me teach you how to play and then I'll tell you what I thought. To set up the game, Unfurl the play mat and place the clock board and token tray nearby. Place a pocket watch for each player on the 12 o'clock space in a random order. And place a point marker for each player starting at zero. Place three ancestor cards per player into the ancestor space. Shuffle the day one deck of history cards and draw five cards into the empty spaces on the play mat. This forms the six card departures row. Shuffle the decks for day two and three and set them off to the side of the board. Give each player a reference card, a crystal tank, and one crystal, and deal them four random itinerary cards. For your first game, it's recommended to pick one of these four itinerary cards at random to begin with. Later, when you're familiar with the game, you'll be choosing a new itinerary card at the beginning of day two and three. Play begins with the player whose pocket watch is on top of the stack. During the game, the player whose pocket watch is furthest back on the track will go first. If it is tied, the player on top goes first. For example, at this point in the game, the green player would have the next selection followed by the red player, and then the blue player. On your turn, you will select one of the six face-up history cards, or take an ancestor card. After you select your card, you will move your pocket watch the indicated number of spaces, moving one less per crystal you spend, always moving your pocket watch at least one space. Then you will collect the resources indicated on the card, as well as on the playmat space you selected the card from. I can select this card and spend one crystal to move my pocket watch one space. For taking that card, I will receive an innovation token and a progress token. Experience tokens are added to the topmost spot in their respective columns. Wild experience tokens can be added to any column. If you cover a space with a crystal symbol, gain a crystal to your crystal tank. If you cover a numbered space, gain that number of points immediately. Similarly, if you fill every space in a row that ends with a number, score those points immediately. Now add this first card to create a column of cards called a trek. Future history cards and ancestor cards will be added on top so that the year is visible and you can only place cards in chronological order. If you would ever select a card that happened previous to the year on top of your trek, you close off the trek to score at the end of the game and start a new trek with the new card. Ancestor cards are placed into treks the same as history cards and their year matches the most recently selected history card in the trek you are allowed to play ancestor cards on top of other ancestor cards. Then slide the remaining history cards to the right and fill in any empty spaces. Then the player furthest back on the clock board takes the next turn. Players continue choosing cards and moving their pocket watch around the clock, ending the day at 12 o'clock. If you select a card that would move your piece Past 12 o'clock, you simply stop at 12 o'clock. If you select a card that moves you exactly onto 12 o'clock, you will score three punctuality points. You may also spend a time crystal to move one less space to gain those punctuality points. Once all players have moved their pocket watch to the 12 o'clock space, a new day will begin. Discard all the history cards for the current day and deal out cards for the next day. Players then discard their itinerary card and all the experience tokens on it and then select a new itinerary card. It's important to know that the history cards are revealed for the new day 
before selecting an itinerary card. So you will have some information to make a decision with. Player's treks are not discarded and can be continued with cards from the next day. If it is the end of day three, proceed to final scoring. At the end of the third day, players will tally their final score by adding points for their completed treks, as well as their last in-progress trek, using this table on the right of the player board. If you only have one card in your final trek, or in any completed treks that you had to complete during the game, you will lose three points. If you have four cards in a trek, you will gain four points. You will score an additional point for each unspent crystal and add those to the points you scored during the game. Whoever has the most total points wins the game. If players are tied for the most points, the player with the single longest trek is the winner. Trekking through history has top-notch component quality. There's nice molded plastic components. The production is outstanding. You have a game trays insert that nicely organizes everything back in the box, including the neoprene mat that was included with the retail edition of the game. And there's a removable token tray that makes setup super easy. On top of that, this game is really easy to get into. I taught and played this game for the first time in under an hour with three players. I think even with four players, you'd really have to be laboring over your decisions to hit that 60 minute mark. The thing that would be most unfamiliar for players is probably the time track turn order instead of just alternating clockwise around the table, but after a few turns, it's easy to get the hang of it. Also included in the retail edition is the Time Warps expansion. I'll leave that as a surprise for you to discover once you've played the game. One of the really neat things that I found about this game was that not only does it have beautiful, unique art for all of the history cards, but on the backs of the cards is a full paragraph telling you some information about that historical event. Now, many of these things are something you'll be familiar with, but there were a few things that I did not know and learn by playing this game. So that is just a cool aspect that you can, you know, casually learn some new trivia while playing a fun game that is not just like a boring trivia game. The two really satisfying aspects about this game are putting together long treks and fully completing your itinerary board. Now, it hasn't happened to me yet, but I would be very impressed if a player got more than 10 cards in a trek. And the other thing that's really satisfying is taking those history cards to get the exact tokens you need to complete your itinerary board and maximize the points you can score in a day without wasting any tokens. Sometimes there's a card you want, but it's in a slot that's gonna give you an extra red token, let's say, but your red column is filled up so if you're able to wait until it slides into a different card spot, you can get a different token and completely fill your board and score more points. Now, some people I've played with didn't find this as enjoyable at two players. I still think it's fairly good, but I think some players don't enjoy it as much because one of those satisfying aspects is limited. Because less cards are cycled out in between your turns, it's more likely that you're going to encounter a scenario where the dates of the history cards just don't work for your current trek and you either have to take an ancestor card and hope something comes out for you next time and you're only getting a wild token instead of getting a bunch of tokens or you're going to have to start a new trek. So I think if you just take the, that mindset of having a strategy of getting more three and four card treks right from the beginning, then you can focus on getting the right tokens to completely fill your itinerary board and you'll have to get enjoyment from that. But if you really just like putting together a long trek in chronological order, two players might not be as fun, 
but Trekking Through History is still an excellent game with three and four players. Trekking Through History has wowed me from the initial unboxing to losing my first game to finally winning one. It just hits a sweet spot complexity-wise that I really enjoy, and the colorful artwork and components and beautiful production makes it really easy to get players to the table. So this is one I definitely recommend checking out. I'll have a link in this video description on where you can get the game. And if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe for more board game videos to come.